Welcome back. Uh, time to talk sports right here on The Breakfast. Uh, the 2022-2023 Premier League uh, fixtures have been released and the dates uh, of all 380 uh, matches have been made known. It's a very juicy uh, set of games uh, we're looking forward to in the biggest league in the world, the English Premier League. The kickoffs are for 3 p.m. for Saturdays and on bank holidays, unless otherwise stated um, and of course, we're told that the uh, fixtures are subject to change. So the match is expected to st start and kick off the, uh, uh, the Premier League season. The first game is on Friday night for Arsenal fans like myself. Uh, that London derby, a uh, tricky one, uh, away to Crystal Palace. Um, last time the team was there, they didn't do too well. On Saturday, the 6th of August, the second set of matches, still in that first round. It will be uh, early kickoff, Fulham versus Liverpool. Uh, Bournemouth are back in the Premier League versus Aston Villa, Leeds versus Wolves, Leicester City versus Brentford, Newcastle versus Nottingham Forest, Spurs versus Southampton, and then late kickoff, 5.30, we'll see uh, Everton versus Chelsea. Um, the opening weekend is rounded off on Sunday with two games, Manchester United versus Brighton by 2 p.m. and West Ham versus Manchester City by 4.30 p.m. It seems to be a juicy one as well. We'd like to bring in a guest Monday, Thomas, who is a seasoned sports journalist. Monday, good morning to you. And nice to have you on a Friday. Good morning, Kofi. It's nice to be here as well. How are you right. doing? Very good, very good. Um, I, 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 I want you to give me a sense of your excitement ahead of the uh, next season, even though we're some weeks away. I'm sure you can't wait. Simply, I can't wait. Uh, as you rightly stated, the biggest football league in the world, English football, happens to be the most exciting one, I tell you. Sometimes it feels like the scripts are written, but you can't completely write a script of an entire season. And we, we saw what happened in the last day uh, of last season, the drama, the very chaos, when, of course, Manchester City were trailing by two goals in the first 45 minutes, and they had to come back to win three goals to two. I mean, this is what we need for English football. I simply can't wait for it. We've seen the first few pictures, but I worry if teams like Manchester United are ready for the next season. I worry if teams like Arsenal are ready for the next season. That's the question right now, because according to reports yesterday, Arsenal were very busy in the transfer market, and uh, the likes of Manchester United are still in the same topic with uh, the same talks with Paul Popper, with the same talks with Paul Popper, who is uh, very close to joining Juventus. I mean, there's this particular documentary where Paul Popper said that Manchester United offered him nothing. But according to reports, uh, God bless the soul of uh, the late Minorala. Minorala actually stopped Paul Pogba from accepting a £300,000 a week offer that Manchester United placed uh, to him. And uh, uh, quite unfortunate now that he's going to be earning 140 with Juventus. But it's all about English football right now, and I simply can't wait for the next season. I'm tipping the likes of Arsenal to make it to the top four and maybe Manchester City win the title again. All right, all right, interesting. Uh, I hope you, at least your prediction comes true as a national fan. Um, we'll look at some of the, uh, the the transfer activity before we're done. But um, looking at the first weekend of the fixtures, um, it seems that a juicy one. Do you think this is the best way the league could have started off with uh, Crystal Palace hosting Arsenal on a Friday night uh, to start off the Premier League? All right, uh, that game. Uh, you're an Arsenal fan. I'm an Arsenal fan too. And as an Arsenal fan, we know what it means playing against Crystal Palace at the Selhurst spot. The last time Arsenal played there was on a Monday where Arsenal lost three goals to Neil. I mean, that was the beginning of the trouble that made the Gunners uh, fall of the top four position. It's certainly going to be tricky, but the most tricky one is going to be for me, Brighton, playing against Manchester United uh, away from home. Eric Ten Hans' first few games as a Manchester United coach is always certainly going to be difficult. We also have a very tricky affair where uh, Everton will take on Chelsea at the uh, Merseyside Stadium. Everton, I mean, a site that uh, did their very best to escape relegation. I don't think they'll want to try that relegation battle again. So they will want to start the season on the bright note, on a very good note, by beating Chelsea. And I see again, uh, Man maybe Manchester United will lose on the first day. But a side I'm very sure will win on the first day on Liverpool, because they're taking on a newly promoted side, Fulham. And uh, for, the, uh, for the first time, a top-flight side is taking on a, uh, 
a newly promoted team for the fourth consecutive season, and that happens to be Liverpool. They take on Fulham. Last season, I think they, they took on Norwich City in their first game, or was it Leicester United? I can't remember, but they are always used to getting very, very, very lucky fixtures in the first start of the season. Easy fixtures, you would say. How do you think the new um, uh, entrance, or I would call it returnees, to the Premier League will fare next season? We're looking at a form who have uh, formed the habit of becoming the new Norwich City. Uh, down this season, up the next season, down the next season, and all that. Uh, you have AFC Bournemouth, who had a good run. Uh, they went down and are back. And then you have uh, Nottingham Forest, who are um, uh, a former giant who have woken from the dead. How do you think these three teams will fare in the coming season? And uh, not forgetting Fulham as well, the biggest boys. Uh, just like I said, the roller coaster are going back, coming back, back and forth. Fulham are the merchants for that. They love going to an English Premier League season and returning the next season to the championship. But I think they are going to be better because they're, they're already being criticized as a team that people are already sure of them returning to the championship next season. But I don't think it's going to be business as usual for Fulham. Uh, they have the likes of Mitrovic and they are looking to... Uh, get more players to make sure the uh, all departments are solid. The goalkeeping department, uh, they're in talks uh, with uh, Arsenal's number two goalkeeper, uh, Bert Leno. So you can see that they're already making some great signings for next season. For Nottingham Forest, uh, the first time they'll be playing in their top five uh, in, since uh, 1999. So they'll be looking forward to remaining in the, in the Premier League for at least three, four years before we talk of them being relegated. I don't think it's going to be business as usual. And as well, the chair is almost... I can remember their first... Uh, the last time they returned to the season, they were a little bit a very tricky side. Uh, it's certainly not going to be business as usual. So maybe we, we, we might get to see sides that have not been relegated in a long while. The likes of maybe Southampton, uh, the likes of Everton, they might also be in the relegation battle. But for the new sides, I think they're ready for battle. And let's just uh, get to wish them luck and... Uh, get to get ready for an exciting season ahead. Which of these three you think will, will stay up? Fulham will stay up. Fulham will stay up. Nottingham Forest will stay up. I'm not sure of Bournemouth. All right, all right, all right. Interesting. And uh, at the end of the first um, weekend, mm -hmm. who, who do you think will be on top of the Premier League table? Will Arsenal remain there? Of course, they're already on top before the league even starts alphabetically. Well, if Arsenal, <laughs> if Arsenal get a win, alphabetically, they have an advantage. So I think Arsenal will be finished on top of the log at the first uh, match of the season. It may not be the same Arsenal we saw last season. Yep, it will not be. They are very close to signing Gerbal Jesus. They are very close to signing Fabio Vieira from Porto. So these are quality signings that will, of course, help keep Arsenal in the top flight and also, as well as in the top four and maybe they get to return to UEFA Champions League football uh, in the start of the 2024 campaign, or 2023 campaign and the 2024 campaign. All right, all right. I'm sure we'll have you talk some uh, transfer gossip on the program sometime, you know, in the future, and then we'll build up to the new season. Uh, Monday, Thomas, it's always a pleasure having you as usual with your excellent analysis. Thanks for your time. Coffee, Bertels. Have a fantastic time. All right, all right. Gunners for life, right? <laughs> um, I mean, if you take a tour of media houses in Nigeria, most of the media personalities are Arsenal fans. I don't know why. My name is Kofi Bartels. That's been uh, our package this week on The Breakfast. Um, uh, I'll return next week, of course, uh, with more. We will return next week with more on the program. Don't forget to follow us online at Plus TV Africa. Have a fantastic weekend. Good morning.